Hey everyone, sorry for the slow upload, but have you ever gotten yourself into a really exciting project and halfway through it, you realize you've bitten off more than what you can chew? Well, this is the case for the final image of this video, but if you are watching this, that means that everything worked. Maybe not according to plan, but I was able to complete the final image for this video. However, um, I hope that you can learn from me and not repeat my mistakes and, you know, sort of maintain your sanity in astrophotography. So I hope that you can learn from me. Should you start a project on an object that is slowly fading away due to the seasons? Eh? Should you start a project on an object that is already low in the sky and the nights are getting shorter and shorter? Say what now? Should you start this project on a week where the full moon is out? No. And finally, should you start a project knowing that your object is low in the sky and you're surrounded by your natural obstruction so that even on the best night, you can only get maybe one to two hours of imaging time at best. And that time is slowly going down. Huh? Stop it. Enjoy my review of the William Optic Space Cat 51. Everything worked out just fine. everyone, Angus Wong here, um, and in this video I'm going to go over my William Optics Space Cat 51. Uh, you can also find these as the Red Cat 51. They're both identical, they just look a little bit different, different color schemes. Now um, I'm not going to spend too much time to go over the specs because, well, they're all over the internet. You don't need me to tell you numbers, you guys can read that on your own. But I think in order to set up the rest of the video, I will uh, go over some of the main specs of this refractor. So here we go. This has a focal length of 250 millimeters with an F ratio of 4.9. Um, it comes with a built-in bath knot mask. It also comes with a uh, built-in filter drawer. Also a uh, built-in field and image rotator. Now, when it comes to the optics, the glass, from a synthetic point of view, it is using the latest and the greatest FPL 53. So when it comes to uh, chromatic aberration, this is about as good as it gets when it comes to just controlling uh, those flaws. Um, now, this is also a Petzfeld design. It means that it is a quadruplet. And I think with that, that's about all the time that I want to spend on the specs because I want to spend more time to talk about why I think this is such a great beginner-friendly telescope. And on top of being a beginner-friendly telescope, why this is a very special refractor um, and probably some of the reasons why it's so sought after right now. So with that, um, let's go outside and I'll talk as I set up the session for tonight. So I want to talk about why I think this is one of the best refractor that a beginner or, you know, if this is going to be your first telescope, this is the one to get. And I think for this segment, I'm actually going to recall my own experience, my own perspective when I first started the hobby right after Common Neowise. So you guys can understand where I was coming from as a beginner and why I was specifically seeking this one out. I think as a beginner in natural photography, you really need to figure out and sort of commit to your initial goals. And you know, if I were you, I would try to make them realistic goals. Goals that you know that you can either measure and then accomplish. And for me, when I was starting out, my goal it was very simple. It was to 
be able to map out the night sky or have a good general idea of where things are. So that means that my goal would require me to use a star tracker because I didn't want any go-to capabilities. I wanted to find the objects all on my own. So with that goal in mind, I discovered the William Optic Space Cat 51 and I thought it was the perfect starter scope for me. So reason number one, it goes back to the focal length of 250 millimeters. And I was actually really looking forward to this because I used to be a visual observer periodically and I wasn't great at it. Um, and this is no fault of the equipment. It was just, I was just so incompetent that I had a hard time looking for objects with a reflector of about 700 millimeters. And when I saw this at 250 millimeters, I thought that was perfect because I'm going to be able to see a lot in a single picture frame that I'm not likely to get lost. I mean, I still got lost uh, every once in a while, but that happened far less frequently. Um, so at 250 millimeters, you're not so zoomed in. Uh, as a matter of fact, you get a super wide feel. So it's very easy for you to find objects. Um, and that's reason number one. Reason number two, and this definitely goes back to my original goal of, you know, finding my own object for a couple of months, getting a good idea of the night sky was due to how light this was and how portable and compact this was, you know, because I wanted to find my own object, I wasn't looking into any go-to mounts. I was looking specifically at star trackers. And that meant that I would have to find my own object using the star tracker and the telescope. So the fact that this is light enough for me to mount onto the star tracker, this was a no brainer for me because, you know, with a star tracker and 250 millimeters of focal length, I could easily find and slew to my object. Okay, reason number uh, three? Yeah, reason number three is because of this bathtub mask. Um, now this is pretty common with essentially all William Optics products, but this made it so easy to focus because you don't have to second guess whether or not that star is as small as it gets in your viewfinder. No, this is definitive and is predictable and easily, um, you can easily repeat it. So the fact that they included the bath mask, I thought that was a no brainer. Now the fourth and last reason why I was adamant on getting myself a William Optic Space Cat 51 was because, well, I'll ask you guys, if you're a beginner or if you can remember how you started, did you know what a field flattener or a focal reducer was when you started the hobby? I didn't and nor did I really want to, wanted to learn about that at that time because there was so many things for me to learn. I had to learn how to polar align, I had to learn about star alignment, how to use a mount, how to take calibration frames, how to post process. I mean, I even had to learn how to use Stellarium. So there was a ton for me to learn at the time and I simply did not want to learn or deal with having to find another piece of glass that goes on the back of my telescope so that I get a flat field of view. So that's why I really wanted the William Optic Space Cat was because Due to his pass fill design, this gives you a flat field of view right out of the box. I didn't have to worry about, you know, oh, which field flattener or which focal reducer will work. No, this is, you can almost say that this is included already. So with those four reasons, that's why from my perspective, this is one of the best beginner telescope simply because it works right out of the box. You don't need to add anything or do anything to it to get it to work. And I think for a beginner, that is a major bonus because you can use that time to learn other things.
want to take a moment to talk about why, in addition to being a super well-suited beginner-friendly telescope, this also happens to be one of the most special telescopes on the market. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or a seasoned uh, hobbyist. And, and I think it comes down to what this telescope was initially designed for. No, I don't think it was designed for beginners. It just so happens that the specs lends itself to be such a great beginner scope, but this was originally designed to do wide field imaging. And what that means is that, you know, you're, you're not really zoomed in to a particular target, but you know, if you're able to frame and select your target uh, properly, you could very well fit multiple deep sky object in the same frame. And that to me is extremely special because it gives me a different perspective on, uh, of the night nice sky and of the images that I take. Because usually when you have an object that, that fills the entire screen, you're thinking to yourself, oh, okay, cool. Uh, hard nebula. Um, but if you have an image with multiple objects, and this, this void of space in between them, that gives you a perspective of size and just how vast the universe is. Because you're thinking to yourself in your head that, okay, one nebula is anywhere from, I don't know, one to 50 light years across. So now you have multiple of them in the same frame and then you have space, empty space in between them that really, maybe I'm just uh, speaking for myself, but that's really exciting to me because I'm looking at the picture and I'm telling myself, oh my God, there's easily, in this one single picture, I've covered a hundred light years. Um, again, so maybe, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but that is why I think, you know, on top of being just a beginner friendly t telescope, this is a special telescope if you're into the wide field sort of style when it comes to astrophotography. And, you know, obviously this gives you great image quality with this uh, FPL 53 uh, uh, glass. So uh, I don't really have to mention much about the image quality, um, but I just want to mention that it's not only for beginners, it's actually for anybody of any level if you're into wide field astrophotography this is a special telescope and <clears throat> i think it's one of the one of the reasons why it's so hard to get one because they're either completely sold out from retailers or if one goes on sale on the use market they're gone in like minutes um so if you can get one I highly recommend you getting one, regardless if you're a beginner or a, or a seasoned uh, hobbyist. So I mentioned that this is a wide field telescope. Um, I'm gonna try to demonstrate that tonight with trying to fit multiple deep sky objects in the same frame and the targets that I'm going for and it's fitting because, you know, winter is ending uh, and so the winter constellations are on their way out. So I'm going to try to fit the Horsehead and Flame Nebula and Orion Nebula all in the same frame. And I hope that by the end of this video, I will have a decent image for you guys to, uh, to check it out and really demonstrate why this William Optic Space Cat or Red Cat 51 is just a really special, special telescope. Before I end the video, I want to say something to all the beginners out there. Now, throughout the course of astrophotography, you're going to become frustrated, annoyed, uh, you will have doubts, um, you will worry whether or not you can complete a project. And I'm here to tell you that it is perfectly okay to have those thoughts because it means that you're thinking, it means that you're trying to get better. And my suggestion for you is First of all, don't ever give up. Uh, second of all, 
as long as you put in the time and the effort, your final image will take care of, of itself. And this was the case for the upcoming final image because I really thought that I couldn't finish, but I just kept telling myself that if I put in the hours, I'll get something out of it. And turns out, I think I got something out of this. I hope you will enjoy the final image. It's, it's really the best I could do uh, until next winter. So with that, I wish you all good health and take care and clear skies.